Hi everyone, thanks for joining me today on another Jewelry Making 101 video. I've got a friend here that wanted to be in the video, so this is Jet. She's 16 and a half. Um, she likes to be in on the action. So today we're going to be doing jump rings and attaching chains. So let's go ahead and get started. Yes, let's go ahead and get started. Okay? Yes. Say bye. Okay, so I'm going to show you how we put the chain on this painted butterfly that I've already showed you how to make on a previous video. Um, I demonstrate a lot of different techniques with different paints that are made specifically for metal. Um, we did the front and back. It's already been sealed and we are ready to add our chain. So for this butterfly, I decided to use this chain, which is a nice brass ox. I have two pieces. I've already pre-cut it. Each side is about 12 inches long. So you want to cut the two chains. I have my jump rings ready to go and two different brass lobster claws for the clasp. So I'm not sure which size we're going to use. We're just going to start and we'll see how it goes. All right, so the first thing you're going to want to do is find one of your small jump rings this is approximately four millimeters and I have a straight nose plier and I have um, a bent nose plier in my left hand. This is how I like to do it because I think it helps keep the jump ring from bending as too much. So you're just going to take this in your left hand and in your right hand you're going to oops, open up the jump ring. Just twist it. Okay, and like I said before, um, these butterflies come pre-drilled, so the holes are already there. You don't have to worry about making your own hole. So you're just going to put the jump ring through, kind of hold it with your finger, put one side of your chain on, and hold it steady, grab this end, and twist close. I'm twisting with my right hand. My left hand is holding steady. And I'm going to rock my right hand back and forth, closing up the jump ring. Generally, you'll hear a little click. And you should see a flush edge to a flush edge right here. And there's your chain. Let's do the other side. Once in a while, you'll find a jump ring that um, hasn't been cut all the way through, and those are just duds. You just have to find another one. So I'm just going to loop that through. Hold this steady with my left hand, and I'm twisting towards the camera with my right hand, away from me, and rock it back and forth. We just heard a little click. That means it is as tight as it can go. I, don't, I can't even see the seam. That one turned out very good. Okay. So now you have your necklace with the two chains that are loose at the top. So we need to add our clasp. So to add our clasp, um, I like to have the lobster claw on the right side. So figure out what the right side of the necklace is going to be. It's going to be this side. And um, most people are right handed, so that's the way I like to do it that way. So we have that size and I have that size. So for this necklace, I think I prefer the smaller clasp. So I'll put the other one aside. And still using my smallest jump ring, I have two that are attached here, so I just need to unattach them. I'm gonna use my smallest jump ring to attach, I'm sorry, attach the lobster claw to the jump ring. And attach this end of the chain I keep going off camera, sorry about that. Hold that steady. And you're good to go. So your lobster lobster claw clasp is attached to that side of the chain. Your other side of the chain, you, anyone could of course just put the clasp right onto the chain and it would be fine. I just think it looks more professional and a little bit neater if you use um, a jump ring. So you could use a bigger jump ring. This is, um, I'm just going to use this one. I think it'll be fine for this, for our purposes here. 
So you're just going to open it, attach it, hold it steady, and twist. Twisting that shut. Okay, let's check it out if that works. And we're all set. There's our clasp. Okay, so I'm going to show you one more time how to attach a chain um, from the point of actually cutting the chain and adding it to another painted butterfly. This one I painted with silver um, gilder's paste is what it's called. This is um, what the can looks like and it's silver. You pop it open like this and you apply it with your fingers, um, with a glove. Um, Actually, a glove would be preferable, or um, a paper towel, or a sponge. If you wanted to apply it using a paintbrush, you would want to thin this with paint thinner first. It does smell a little bit like shoe polish, so I'm going to cover it back up. Um, and again, it's called Gilder's Paste, and that silver is the color that I used on this. I have a whole separate video of actually painting this with the Gilder's Paste. And I'm trying to find one of the butterflies that hasn't been painted yet to show you. I'm going to pause the camera just to find that and we'll be right back. Okay, the office has gotten quite messy today, but I did find it. The brand is Vintage and it comes like that. And I'll go ahead and open it up for us. And we can see that it comes like that. And it's just a natural brass. And... Again, if you haven't seen my other videos on how to paint these, um, here's the finished product of this one. Um, I've got this one. And this one. And I have a whole lot more on the other video. So this video I want to show you how to attach the chain. So I have this silver chain right here. It's silver plated. And how I measure it is I get a toothpick and I hold, well, actually it's already measured, but I'm going to show you how I cut it evenly. I take the toothpick like this and then I hold this up and then I can't really show you the camera. I've got the blinds open, but I just hold it like this and then that way I can see the even end here and then just pull it down like this. Here's the one we need to cut right here. And you want to have a nice pair of cutting pliers. And I have these that I got at the craft store. And you want to put these away from your eye. Um, don't clip this by your eye because it could pop up. Um, I have glasses on today, so that's protecting my eyes. But you would want to make sure you protect your eye. Or sometimes what I do is I hold it down into the mat cut it that way. Okay, and we're all set. We have two separate chains. So next what you would want to do is add your jump rings to each end. Let me show you, pull up the... You'd want to add the jump rings here and here and attach your chain to both sides. I'm going to find a jump ring that will work for us. Um, I'll go ahead and use these. They're a little bit shinier than I would like since this chain is kind of a matte silver. Let me zoom in on this a little bit more here. But for our video purposes, um, I think you'll be able to see. So I hold these pliers with my right hand. Again, this one with my left hand. And we're just going to open our jump ring. put it through the hole and then add our chain and then make sure you're closing up your jump ring nice and tight I heard a snap so I know it's very very tight and just even them up right there and you're all set I'm going to go ahead and finish this up and then we'll be right back. Okay, so we've attached our chain to the butterfly. Our next step is going to be our last step, 
and that's adding the clasp and the um, other jump ring to the other side of the chain to close up our necklace. So I'm going to put this on this side right here. I'm kind of sideways on the camera so you guys aren't looking at my hand and hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Um, and you can put a bigger jump ring on the end if you want. If it's if you're making this for yourself or somebody that um, doesn't have a lot of dexterity, like an older person, you might want to put a larger jump ring on that side so it's easy for them to um, maneuver with the clasp. I am going to put kind of a small lobster clasp because that's all I have right now that I can find. Here's the size. Okay. And I'm just going to open my jump ring, attach it to the chain, and then thread the lobster claw clasp on it, and then take our bent nose pliers holding on to, with our left hand, twist with our right hand. And you're all set. So we'll go ahead and test out the clasp. I do test these before I put them on because I found sometimes um, you'll get one that doesn't work. So I like to just try to open and close it before before you um, actually go through all the work of putting it on. So there you go.